Intel has a whole range of new laptop processors coming out, but they aren't what you might expect. Uh, the Arrow Lake Ultra 200H series aren't just for thin and lights like Lunar Lake was, and they're also not exclusively for gaming devices either. They're actually designed for both platforms, and because of that, Intel might have a secret weapon for the laptop market because their current lineup can get pretty confusing, but I'll break it down simply. Anything with the word Ultra is based off a newer processor architecture, while the others are refreshes of older designs. Meanwhile, the V and U series sacrifices performance for insane efficiency, so you'll find these in Ultra portables and the H and HX CPUs focus more on overall performance. The Core Ultra 200H is an exception though. It flexes all the way from gaming laptop power at 115 watts all the way down to 28 watts. So right into the thin and light territory. And that actually makes it overlap with a bunch of Intel's lower wattage processors like Lunar Lake. I know that's a lot of overlapping, but I hope I was able to clear that up. But this also sets up Arrow Lake H as a pretty unique processor lineup because it can bring up to 16 threads into the ultra portable space. That's double of what Intel's 200V processors have. And even in its lowest stand form, there's a dozen processing threads on tap. And a lot of like those Ryzen CPUs, you'll see laptops with these Intel H series processors using both integrated and discrete graphics. And this is where things get a bit more confusing for some buyers. You see, Lunar Lake processors and their Arc 100V graphics got Intel's flashy brand new XE2 or battle image architecture. The Arrow Lake CPUs get the Arc 100T series, which essentially uses the older Alchemist XE LPG design. So when both are compared at around the same wattage in gaming, the more efficient Lunar Lake processor might actually come out on top but more on that later. You might also be wondering, why would Intel even consider doing this? Well, they obviously needed something with more cores to compete in the multi-threaded workloads against the Ryzen AI9 series, which has at least 20 threads. And considering Intel isn't using hyper-threading, well, on paper at least, they might actually have an advantage. So to test out the new Air Lake H series, we've got two very different laptops here. The Asus ZenBook Duo and the MSI Prestige 16 AI Evo. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a mouthful, but that basically shows how wide of a cross-section these chips will find themselves in. So both have the Core Ultra 9 285H. The Duo runs at 37 watts baseline while the Prestige hits a maximum of 52 watts. We'll be comparing this against some of the other laptops that we have in our lineup, including the ASUS VivoBook S14 with the Ryzen AI9 365 CPU. Uh, we have the ASUS ZenBook S16 with the Ryzen AI9 HX370, the Lenovo Yoga Slim 9i with Luna Lake's Ultra 7 258B processor. We also have the Lenovo Slim 7X with Qualcomm's X1e series chip. And finally, we threw in Apple's MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. Now, the main reason for including the M4 Pro in this comparison is to evaluate its performance per watt efficiency, especially since it operates at a consistent 50 watts under full throttle. This also makes it an ideal candidate to compete against the MSI Prestige 16 AI Evo, which runs slightly higher at 52 watts. Also, we'll be putting it side by side with the VivoBook S14 powered by the Ryzen 9 365, which operates at 53 watts. This offers a balanced view of how these chips perform under similar power envelopes. Moving on to the lower end wattage devices, the ZenBook Duo averaged around 37 watts during testing. And for a fair comparison, we'll look at the ZenBook S16 equipped with the Ryzen 9 HX370 running at 33 watts and then the Lenovo Slim 9i with Intel's Lunar Lake Ultra 7 256V, which operates at 35 watts. And Qualcomm still hasn't allowed for third-party power monitoring tools, so we're using a formula to approximate its power consumption, which is still fairly on the higher side compared to Lunar Lake. I'm hoping that this structure can give us valuable insights into how different architectures and chipsets manage power efficiency and performance under similar conditions. Okay, so power is one thing, but how does each of these actually manage that power to deliver the best possible performance? Well, that's where we ran into a bit of an issue. You see, the ZenBook Duo can be classified as a thin and light with a lot of complexities type of laptop. It's got two screens going for it. There's just a lot going on. And so there has to be some sacrifice. And one of them is obviously its lower power envelope. But the MSI Prestige, given the fact that it runs above 50 watts, you'd think that it would at least showcase the Ultra 9 285H in the best 
possible way. And it doesn't really do that since the chip hits 100 degrees maximum through the entire test. But I also want to put this into a bit of a context because anything over 45 watts is typically overwhelming for most thin end lights. I mean, look at the M4 Pro MacBook Pro and the VivoBook S14 for proof of that. Both are over 90 degrees as well. Meanwhile, devices hovering under 40 watts like the Duo behave a lot better. The problem is that the MSI Prestige isn't slim and it also isn't light. What this shows is in order to simply compete with the Ryzen AI 9 series, and no, not to beat it, Intel needed to push the 285H into a place where it becomes terribly inefficient. There is a silver lining though. Just like the MacBook Pro, the Prestige delivers its power without getting screaming loud. Actually, considering the M4 Pro chip chugs back about 50 watts, what Apple has been able to accomplish here is a minor miracle. So MSI and Apple sacrificed a bit of temperatures to get an overall quieter experience. Then again, the Asus ZenBook Duo's relatively high noise levels still point towards these new Arrow Lake processors being on the hotter running side. As a counterpoint, the VivoBook S14 is thinner, lighter, and smaller, but its 53 watt AI9365 seems to be overwhelming the cooling system. Not only did that laptop get to an almost constant 100 degrees, but it's also the loudest here. So take all of this into account as we head into the uh, testing segment. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. The new Antec Flux Pro is an absolute win of a full tower with tasteful design elements that don't scream for attention, but are perfectly mature to stand out among copycat cases. And you know Antec will include fantastic out-of-the-box airflow with six fans and proper shroud ventilation to help your GPU breathe better. It's not just a gimmick, but a clever use of a 90 degree power supply mount that actually helps with cable management at the same time. This case was clearly designed by PC builders to make your journey as pleasant as possible and is one of my favorite full towers right now. Check it out below. So let's kick things off with some real world tests. And right away, it's clear that Arrow Lake H delivers noticeable performance gains over Lunar Lake, thanks to its higher threat count. No surprise here, it's exactly what Intel needed to stay competitive with AMD. However, the M4 Pro is in a league of its own, once again, proving Apple's hyper-efficient architecture. The Arrow Lake H also holds its own in lightly threaded tasks. Intel has consistently led in single core performance, and here, that advantage is clearly evident. I also want to point out something interesting here. While there are noticeable performance differences between the Prestige 16 and the ZenBook Duo due to their varying power levels, the same can't be said for the Ryzen laptops. Despite consuming different amounts of power, the performance delta between them is surprisingly narrow thanks to the improvements Zen 5 brings to the table. If you're using a CPU-based video conversion tool like Handbrake, the key takeaway is that those 16 threads are pushing really hard to keep up with the AI9-365 in the VivoBook S14. However, it is important to remember that many transcoding tools leverage hardware acceleration through each chip's dedicated media engine. And this is where the performance dynamics shift dramatically compared to Lunar Lake. One possible reason could be that Arrow Lake allows for higher power envelopes across the entire package, meaning the GPU and the QSV engines might be benefiting from just a little bit of extra power, uh, but that's just a theory. But, you know, it seems like they do play a role here. Shifting to creator-focused workloads, the numbers look pretty promising. Performance between Strix Point and Arrow Lake is quite similar in applications like Photoshop. And if you're a heavy Lightroom user, those extra threads combined with Intel's power efficiency can deliver a fast and productive experience. I'm actually excited to see how this will trickle down into thinner form factors, especially for creators who travel and need powerful portable devices. But I can't overlook how effortlessly Apple's M4 Pro outpaced the competition in this segment. There's a reason why creators and professionals in any creative field gravitate towards this platform. It's simply too good, making it hard for others to compete. However, the high cost of entry remains a significant barrier for many consumers. In that sense, it's great to see both Arrow Lake and Strix Point stepping up and bringing their best to the table. Shifting gears to gaming, and as I mentioned earlier, Arrow Lake isn't going to bring massive improvements over Lunar Lake. In fact, this is an area where the chip falls behind as it's paired with an older Alchemist XCLPG design instead of Intel's Halo XE2 architecture. I should also point out that we're still in the very early stages of testing gaming on Apple Silicon, but we managed to run a few synthetic tests to set the stage for the future. And honestly, 
I had to blink twice to believe the results from 3D Mark, which <laughs> it really tells a compelling story for Apple Silicon. But there's still a long way to go with testing, so when it comes to real-world gaming results, we'll be showing them without the M4 Pro. Now, gaming on integrated graphics is always a balancing act, as performance really depends on specific demands of the game. In graphically intense titles like Cyberpunk or Rainbow Six Siege, a powerful GPU like the ARC 140V from Lunar Lake shines, thanks to the impressive performance of XC2 architecture. However, in CPU-limited games such as Dota 2 or PUBG, a faster CPU like the one in Arrow Lake can deliver much better results, as its high power envelope and threading capabilities allow it to handle the heavy lifting where GPU demands aren't as high. That being said, AMD's RDNA 3.4 architecture within Strix Point CPUs deserve some mention here because it competes very well with Intel's offerings. So I think those options shouldn't be dismissed. One of the things that I value the most in a laptop is how it performs when it's unplugged. Because let's face it, these are portable devices meant to be used on the go. They're not just meant for stationary desk setups. So the good news is that with Arrow Lake, there isn't a massive performance drop when you switch from plugged in to unplugged mode, uh, which is a huge plus for anyone who values both portability and consistent performance. In contrast, Strix Point really struggled in this regard, showing noticeable drops in performance when running on battery. But the real kicker is that the M4 Pro has been incredibly solid throughout all of this, handling performance demands without breaking a sweat. When it comes to battery life, comparing capacities across different devices can be tricky as they vary based on their form factors. However, we were able to group them into two categories. So the MSI Pro C16 Evo and the MacBook Pro 16 both feature batteries with capacities over 95 watt hours, while the rest of the lineup generally falls within the 70 to 75 watt hour range, except for the ZenBook S16, which features a 78 watt hour battery. So when we ran our standard web browsing test, we noticed that the inclusion of those extra threads in Arrow Lake does come with some trade-offs. For example, the ZenBook Duo and the Slim 9i both have similar battery capacities, but one is powered by Arrow Lake while others runs on Lunar Lake, and the difference in runtime is significant. Meanwhile, the Prestige 16 offers solid results, but it doesn't quite match the MacBook Pro 16 in this area. And if we shift our focus to a YouTube video playback test, we just see how the power and thread constraints of Lunar Lake start to give Arrow Lake a serious run for its money. However, when we switch over to a more intense workload where the CPU is taxed at 100%, Arrow Lake actually manages to hold its ground pretty well. Despite the high demand on all of its CPU resources, it offers solid performance and one time. But beyond that, it feels like Intel needed to push Arrow Lake pretty hard just to compete with your old AMD chips. And that leads to increased heat and overall higher power envelope than Lunar Lake all for minimal gains in most apps. So if you're looking for something to attack multi-threaded workloads, then yes, the 285H offers something the 258B can't. But there's no reason to recommend it over the Ryzen 9 AI9 series. It's just too little, too late. So that's your first look at Air Lake's performance. The TLDR is that Intel definitely needed this to stay competitive with AMD, but at the same time, it doesn't introduce anything groundbreaking. If Intel had somehow managed to bring the x 2 graphics engine into this platform with even better improvements, we might be looking at a different product here. However, this is only half the battle. We still have the HX series coming down the line, which will most likely be powering a lot of gaming laptops. So that will be an interesting comparison to keep an eye out for. But until then, thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.